Gail watched the Bible story Esther premiere on television with Lois Lombard, with an Esther quick with languages like Gail, who prayed on the floor prostrate like Gail, with a king who gave Esther a silence with no explanations, see September 1992, and who made love to Esther like Brent loved Gail, 2001. The Ash Wednesday Earthquake from a fault deep in the earth, the costliest earthquake in Seattle history hit Seattle during a strange Seattle winter that had no rain. No one died in the earthquake. The ground moved under Gale, but she and her family suffered no damage. Her divorce became final, but she lost custody of her son because of mental illness concerns over her belief that the Vatican caused problems, and that Brent Spiner's girlfriend, Lori, was involved. Under court order, she could only see her son without the father accompanying her if she resumed psychiatric medications. Gail chose not to see her son. She moved to Florida to live with her mother. She couldn't afford to move her stuff from Seattle and lost almost her entire video library, including the TNT production Young Catherine about Catherine the Great, and her book library in Seattle, which had to be auctioned off. She lost her kawaii piano, her computer, her files, and 95% of the stuff she had in her Seattle apartment. She saved her novel Silver Skies on floppy disk and paper. The same day that Brent stepped onto Florida soil to ease closer to Gail, Jesuits released the film Legally Blonde with uncanny similarities to the conspiracy they created around Brent, brunette Gale, and the, quote, cute and funny blonde, unquote, Lori. Brent informed Gale that after he bought a house in Florida where Gale was living, that Lori McBride detonated a car with a woman in it, that Lori claimed was Gale. Brent cried. Then Lori laughed and said it wasn't Gale, but that she blew up her clone, Brent still tried to get to Gail. September 11, 2001. Gail believes that because Brent planned to befriend a flight attendant, the niece of Gail's stepdad, who she was living with at the time, to try, and she, that he was trying to use the step flight attendant to try to get to Gail, that the Jesuits crashed jets onto those towers to intimidate the famous Brent Spiner from marrying Gail. After 9-11, Gail still loved Brent, but was not optimistic that he would show up and needed a bigger hero than Brent. She noticed Russian President Vladimir Putin wanted to marry him, but told Brent she'd marry him if he showed up. In November 2001, USA Today printed a lying article that claimed Vladimir had a wife named Ludmila, President Bush, to protect his wife Laura from Jesuits, threatened war on Russia if Vladimir would not play the Jesuit game that Larissa never died and had a new name, Ludmila. Ludmila is the Jesuit, Jesuit clone wife of Larissa, but Jesuits goofed, making Ludmila an autumn in coloring, whereas Larissa was a summer. 2001, Gail moved to Tallahassee, Florida, in November 2001 and worked at Burdines. 2002. She had health problems with strange illness, illnesses, so she couldn't work most jobs and was granted bankruptcy in Tallahassee. She liquidated her IRAs, but Gail's Jes Jesuit husband had given Gail IRAs that could lose money in the stock market, so Gail's IRAs lost about $6,000 that was paid into them. Gail, with victim impact statements, defended Brent in court. Lori McBride, a devoted Jesuit, impregnated herself through artificial insemination with Brent's stolen sperm to demolish his love for Gail. Jewish Brent Spiner never married or made love to Lori for this pregnancy because from December 1999 onward, when Gail told Brent that Lori was a Vatican agent, Brent knew Lori McBride belonged to the organization, the Jesuit Order, that sponsored 
the Nazi Holocaust against the Jews. Jesuits, masters at genetics, reproduction, and cloning, used artificial insemination with ease. <clears throat> uh, they use artificial insemination with ease. Gail studied the German language again because Vladimir is fluent in German. She wrote a small book in German. See the uh, uh, see Gail's website for this at um, at her writer page, gabrielchana.com slash writer.html. She dabbled over her ending to Silver Skies and jotted notes. She theorized that the cure to AIDS may lie in the germ itself, in the portion of the germ's gen genetic code that does not mutate. She studied life and health insurance and variable annuities and learned more law from this and passed the state exam for this in Tallahassee on the first try. She was not comfortable, though, about working as an agent. She noticed that Jesuits responded to her thoughts and figured out that Jesuits have mind-reading technology and that no one has any privacy. Outraged, she used Vladimir as her instrument to defeat Jesuits. First thing, she told Vladimir he trusted President Bush, Bush too much that he must make Russia strong and independent of the United States. She moved back to her mother's house in another part of Florida in December 2002. 2003. She abandoned natural medicine and went from 115 to 140 pounds, but did not resume psychiatric medications. Her stepdad gave her a computer, and from a saved floppy, she downloaded Silver Skies onto her computer. Vladimir used newly discovered technology using brain-to-brain -brain communications via satellite to make love to Gail and to give her information to write law. Vladimir, Vladimir became the great lover, like Potemkin, of Catherine the Great, Gale. He informed Gale that Jesuits stole his sperm and impregnated a woman with it, now in her third trimester. To comfort Vladimir, Gale, with brain-to-brain -brain love, streamed passion to Vladimir to restore in him faith in his manliness. I know you've been faithful to me, she whispered to him. Brain-to-brain -brain loving is very intimate, as intimate as sex and maybe even more so, because the thoughts and emotions of the lovers come together as their bodies meld together in the brain-to-brain -brain intimacy. The real Vladimir Putin is nothing like how he's portrayed in the media. He makes love to Gail with depth of feeling and commitment, and she has become one with him as if he was her heart and soul. He feels the same about her. She hired H&R Block to do her taxes, then fired them when Jesuits blackmailed H&R Block to do her return incorrectly to get Gail into, tr into trouble with the IRS by not filing correctly regarding her liquidated IRAs, where the Jesuits used the stock market to take $6,000 which were paid into the IRAs. When Gail requested the original contracts for her IRAs, she got the runaround when she made phone calls. Nothing worked to give her the original IRA contracts. Because of this, Gail does all her own tax returns. Furious over Jesuit use of computer satellite technology to create cancers, long-distance heart attacks, cloning, reproductive crimes, illnesses such as AIDS, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, and other horrors, Gale wrote conspiracy law to defeat the Jesuits in their goal for a world takeover. Vladimir Putin downloaded this at once onto his computers in Russia and implemented the, gro implemented the groundbreaking laws in Russia, the first laws in the world, to deal with Jesuit criminal space age medicine and science. Gail developed a legal mind from legal principles learned from, long, from her long and expensive divorce and her study of real estate in 1999 and her study of insurance in 2002, because you have to learn law for these state exams. Conspiracy law became the size of an encyclopedia and helped Vladimir defeat the Jesuit use of satellite computer technology in medicine science, government, and law.
Gale's Law became accepted and praised worldwide with fans like Harvard Law and Medical School. But Jesuits fought it with ferocity. No one had written laws to deal with crimes using computer satellite technology, so Gale took it on as a personal project with no pay. She had a brief stint as a high school English teacher at a Christian school in Florida at this time. Vladimir informed Gale through brain-to-brain -brain communications that about half her genetic profile is that of King David and the other half German and Russian royals. Jesuits have difficulty with Gale's genetic profile. Her clones tend not to serve the Jesuits and jump off cliffs and resist Jesuit control over them. 2004. She began a job at a major retailer in March 2004. Because her mother did not support her writings or her love for her hero, Vladimir Putin, Gail moved out of her mother's house and into an apartment in the same town as her mother. Right after Gail moved out of her mother's house, Jesuits caused one hurricane after another to hit the town where Gail lived. She lost electricity and food. Though Vladimir Putin gave to Chrysler Financial the pay off for Gail's car, Jesuits interfered and denied the payment. Vladimir was unaware of this. Jesuits then used computer satellite technology to give Vladimir Putin a heart attack. Then they towed Gail's car without notice in October 2004 from her apartment's parking lot. Gail only got her car back after she sent the full payoff, about $2,200 in, $2, in U.S. dollars in cash, Western Union at once, with emergency money borrowed from her mother. Brent honored Gail at this time by playing Bob in The Aviator about her great uncle Howard Hughes. 2005 Gail's yeast bacterium infection was worsening. She experienced dizziness and stomach bowel symptoms. She took up natural medicine again in June 2005 as the only way to deal with strange illnesses. On natural medicine, she went from 144 to 118 pounds. God showed Gail in her daily Bible readings from Ecclesiastes 10.20 to not curse the king. That would be the Jesuit general, or 666. Know not in thy thought, and curse not the rich, that is the Jesuits, in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air, satellite signals, shall carry the voice, one's thoughts, and that which hath wings, a satellite, shall tell the matter, mind-reading technology. She finished Silver Skies in August 2005, and incorporated Ecclesiastes 10.20 into the ending. Steven Spielberg became interested in Gail's writings, and the Nobel Prize Committee want, wanted to give Gail the Nobel Prize in literature. But because of Jesuit interference, Brent and Vladimir were unable to get any writing money to Gail. She tried to get a literary agent or a publisher, but with Jesuit control over 95% of all publishers and agents, none offered their services. So the masterpiece Silver Skies sat in Gail's apartment, unread. She couldn't even afford to make copies for friends to read. She could finally afford a sewing machine and began sewing again. Brent was cast as a lead in, in the television th series Threshold. Jesuits eliminated their Pope John Paul II automaton or android, which they used to intimidate Vladimir Putin by threatening to kill the Pope if Vladimir wouldn't play the Ludmila game. They replaced the automaton with a human pope, Pope Benedict, who, despite Jesuit interference, got elected pope. Gale's conspiracy laws govern the election of the new pope. Matthew McConaughey was cast as lead Dorben Habakkuk if Silver Skies went to film. Matthew, who substituted for Vladimir one month as Gale's telepathic lover, after Vladimir's near-fatal heart attack, fell in love with Gail. So Brent and Vladimir established a marriage list for Gail, despite her objections, to ensure that if anything happened to them, Gail would get a good husband. And this ends this part of Gail's story.